at Mayo Hour. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Hour Fight Night Chicago DraftKings picks for the UFC. Joining me in studio, Cody Safdick. What is happening, my man? Yeah, happy to be here, Pat. Uh, as always, break down a little fight action, but uh, things are good. Four cash game lineups in a row have hit the money. So we're rolling in it right now. We need to keep the good times going. And when you gave me your first list for GPP and cash teams, they're very, very similar. And I like when they're similar. That means you're really feeling it for the week. Oh, yeah. But uh, now you've changed it up a little bit. Not too much. Very similar still. S- similar teams. And I probably should let people know by looking at a few of these names that every time you hear me mispronounce a name, you're going to hear. Oh, yeah. Because you're the MMA expert. I'm just the guy hosting the show because it's a fantasy sports network fight network crossover. We need a fight guy. We need a fantasy guy. And you know, it falls to me. It helps out a lot because I've been getting a lot of questions online. People will be like, well, what do you what do you estimate the percentage of people that will have picked him? You know, that's where I come good, in. That's where you come in and it does help me quite a bit. So the fact that it's four in a row, uh, you are definitely playing a part in that. Yeah, in cash games, you do not need to worry about the ownership percentages and GPPs, the guaranteed prize pools, the tournament games where you're playing against like 20,000 people. You do need to kind of factor in oh, yeah. who the most popular picks are going to be and maybe go against them because you can create a lot of leverage for yourself by xing out 40 percent of the field if you pick an upset in that fight and it happens and boom you're skyrocketing people don't plan to win those every single week but if you can win one which we did back in january with the lineup you gave out on the show you're good for the year you're good for the year <laughs> exactly so let's get right into this holly home versus valentina Shevchenko. You got it. Boom. Nailed it. Nailed there we it. go. Uh, Holly Holm was the champ. She beat Ronda Rousey, didn't That's she? That's correct. But now she's not the champ because she lost to Misha Tate. Is she going to win here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, she's a big favorite for a reason, and her DraftKings price is very, very high. And I think that's not so indicative of what she's going to go get a finish. But as we've been seeing, the, really? only thing, the only thing better than getting a first-round finish is getting a five-round route, is being able to just put Joanny and Jacek. I mean, this girl scored 130 points, and she lost the first two rounds. But it's accumulation. It's punch output. And the fact that you're fighting for 25 minutes, if you're a 115, or in this case, a 135-pound female, when you have good cardio and you have good punch output, then you can put a bunch of significant strikes on the board. I think that's why she's so expensive, but I would have to pass on this one altogether. Valentina Shevchenko is uh, in her mind. They claim it as a 17-time World Muay Thai champion, but I I think that's very skewed at some point. Because she hasn't won the last 17 years? <laughs> Let's just say she's a <laughs> world champion in Muay Thai. She's also a world champion in kickboxing, and she has had good success in MMA. And as you're talking about, Holly Holm comes in and beats Ronda Rousey, right? Misha Tate comes in and beats Holly Holm. Amanda Nunez comes in and beats Misha Tate. This Valentina Shevchenko girl almost beat Amanda Nunez. So we got like a five or six girl division. They're all fighting each other. These girls are going to meet sooner or later anyways. But uh, in terms of fantasy value, not really feeling. If you do like Shevchenko, she's supremely undervalued and someone that she's going to get five rounds, and I believe this fight to go to the distance. She's got five rounds to work with. She's not a bad punt play at all. We always talk about how the female fights generally generate more fantasy points than anything else. Yes. Because they're just rock em, sock em robots at you. They're just piling up point after point after point, and the knockouts don't necessarily come right away. Like you mentioned, you, know, you can lose a few rounds, come back into it, and still score points. Oh, yeah. Even if you're taking a punt play and you think it's going to be a back-and-forth match, even if they don't get the win, you can still score like 50, 60 points on the back end. And I mean, Shevchenko is 8,600 bucks. That's, That's not what bad. I mean. You take her, and all of a sudden you're like, geez, I can afford all the other big players that I wanted. Even a cash game situation, and I'm not sure I'd play Shevchenko in a cash game, but even if you played her in a cash game and you can get now three or four finishers who are going to go and get first and second round stoppages, then even if she does, as you mentioned, lose and she gets 50 points on a cash game team, beautiful. Yeah, that's fine. I, it's, it's, I've had guys win and get less than 50 points. If that happened last no, uh, last I time out, I forget who it was. They scored like 41 like, points. Like, come like, on. It's like, oh, like, what, what do you do? Just like lay on top of him for three <laughs> Essentially. rounds? Essentially. <laughs> Essentially. All right, so where do you want to go to next? What's your quick finish of the card? I got to go with Francis Ngannou. I mean, this is someone who I like on my cash game team. I like him on my GPP. One thing about him is he's the most expensive guy. And I've had people ask me, does that mean he's now going to be the most played guy? No, absolutely not. I think not. people will avoid Holly him Holm will be the most played player on this card. Because she's a big name and she has a good price tag next Yeah, because I think what people forget, especially on DraftKings when it comes to playing MMA, the majority of people that play in these contests are more likely to be me than you. Right. The hardcore MMA fan generally just likes MMA. They like, they like watching the fights. They do like to bet on it. They like to do whatever. But actually playing on DraftKings, you're getting the crossover from football, 
from baseball, from basketball, from golf. I mean, the areas where I excel in. <laughs> I But I like taking shots on MMA. I think it's a weaker field. I think there's a lot of money to be made there. But I think that most people are just random, casual DraftKings players outside of the hardcore MMA fan. I know there's a whole bunch. They tend to do really well. But I think that when people see it, they're like, oh, Holly Holm, she she can beat Ronda Rousey. She can get an easy knockout here, and she's not the most expensive player, so I'll go with her. I think that would be the mindset, at least in projecting ownership for Holly Holm. You could agree more. And in Holly Holm's case, I mean, she's had four fights in the UFC now. She has been victorious. She's finished one single opponent in that in her four fights. For her four fights, sorry. That being Ronda Rousey. So, yeah, I'm sure a casual fan goes, huh, she beat Ronda. I've never even heard of this other girl, so it should be easy night. Now, like, no, 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 b- not the case. Before I talk to you, that's exactly how I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, then let's roll with that. But uh, as terms of somebody who I feel like I need to have, I feel like I need to have Francis Ngannou. He's a 7-1 to favorite in the actual betting line. But above all else, he is what you want. He, he's, he's what you want in a GPP team, sure. And the fact that he's going to go out there, he's going to probably knock the guy out. His UFC debut, he knocks his opponent out in the very first round. Sec- er, he, sorry, drops him in the first round, knocks him completely out cold in the second round. Second fight in the UFC, he completely destroys this guy in the first round, knocks him out in the second round. So for the price tag, he's like, geez, I don't want a second round finish. But he's taking a step back in competition. I would allow you to try to pronounce the guy's name, but I think you're dancing around it. But Boyan Mahalovic is probably in for a very, very <laughs> early night here. I think he's going to get thumped. I think he's going to go down in that first first round if for whatever reason he makes it out of the first round it's almost a foregone conclusion he goes down in the second for the price tag I definitely want that first round finish don't get me wrong but I think Francis Ngannou is not only safe but he's safe and should get that easy finish George Sullivan and Hector Urbina. Uh, Sullivan is 10-5, still very expensive, especially when you have an $11,500 player on your team as well, but you do like him still. I do. Initially, as you were talking about at the start of the show, you know, I kind of had a different team and we thought about it. I thought about it, but Alex Oliveira was the guy that I was going with instead of George Sullivan. $200 more, and the way he matches up with James Muntasri, so you know what? James is a tough guy, but Alex Oliveira should overpower him, and a decision is very, very likely, so maybe put him on a cash game team, but you know what? 10700 is expensive. We look at George Sullivan here. George Sullivan, I've been cutting tape of him all day, and I like the guy. Black belt under Kurt Pellegrino, big, strong, durable guy. Started his career 2006 as a striker, so I feel like these guys are very well-rounded. Knock on him, he's 35 years old, and he's coming off a first-round knockout loss of his own. But he's being matched up here against Hector Urbina, who is not a factor in the division whatsoever. If you were to rank out the worst guys in the division, he may very well be the worst guy in the division. And you look at his career before ever signing with the UFC. I believe he's got five losses, four of them are by knock out, usually in the first round. He's a wrestler, so when he takes you down, he just wants to control you, but against Sullivan, Sullivan's a good wrestler too, but he's a black belt on the ground. If it hits the ground, Sullivan will be in control. More times than not, I think Sullivan will end up on top, and they call him the silencer, and I never understood why, but he he silences them, you know what I mean? Like, he gets on top of you, he's very methodical. He just beats you and beats you and beats you and completely knocks you out, and if you look at his last ten wins, I think he's knocked out something like seven or eight of those guys. He's versatile, he's strong, I am a tad bit nervous that he was coming off a first-round knockout, but it, it's the same thing as that. When you're fighting lesser guys, you're getting homeless. I don't want to say an easy night, never an easy night in this sport, but he should be able to shine the way he did in the past, and I think that's what he does here. Minus 200 on the betting line sounds pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I mean, I always talk about who are kind of the locks in my head, who are some of the guys, and those are the guys you want on your cash game team. Even if he's only going to score 50 points, but you are 100% sure he wins, cash game play. I'm not 100% sure this guy wins, but he will score more than 50 points, and I'm definitely going to take my chance with cash game and GPP on Sullivan. Well, can you tell me a bit more about Alex Oliveira in that fight, just in case, you know, I want to play some multiple lineups in there, maybe throw him in? No, absolutely. Alex Oliveira, also known as Cowboy, so I believe we broke down the Cowboy versus Cowboy matchup. How many Cowboys are there? Just the two, just the two. Cerrone is the other one? Yeah, Cerrone is the other one. Now, the kind of the thing was, well, it was a loser leaves town match. There's only room for one Cowboy. So I this prefer guy, a Judy Bagwell on a pole match. That's the way to do it, you know, <laughs> or at least some type of crazy match here. But in Oliveira's case, yeah, what are those Texas death match. If you're going to have two Cowboys, that's what you got to do. A, a four-corner Texas death match. But yeah, with, with Cowboy Oliveira, I would stop calling him Cowboy, but it's tattooed on his chest, so <laughs> he's he pretty committed at this point, Pat. He's a big, strong, versatile in the sense that he can strike, he can go to the ground, but his biggest thing is he's very powerful. He's at 170 pounds now, in which he carries the weight well. James Wintosri, another former 55er, does not carry the weight nearly as well. He's not as strong. He's more of a finesse guy, and I just think he's going to get bullied around. The main question is, even if he's getting bullied around, 
if I was to guess when the stoppage is going to happen, I'd say second or third round. Those are just kind of what I'm thinking. With Sullivan, I'm thinking first or second round. So I just think he's $200 cheaper and has just as good of a shot of finishing around the same time period and scoring as many points, maybe even a little bit sooner. But Cowboy Oliveira, no joke. Someone I expect a role here. I just couldn't really afford him, to That's be fair. honest. All right. So the, I feel like this one's going to be, be rough for me here. So we're going to go with Dmitry Smolyakov. I think you got it, yeah. Versus Luis Henrik. Henrique. Damn it. Enrique. I always Louis put the Henrique. accent on everything, too. <laughs> Enrique. Uh. There's no accent aigu there, Pat. What did I say? Enrique? Enrique. It would be Enrique. Yeah. Enrique. So what yeah. is it? Which one is it? Louis no. on. <laughs> now you're throwing me up. <laughs> uh, I think you're, you said Enrique, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I need the buzz now. <sighs> That's too bad. Louis so Enrique. We, we got 8 and 0 versus 8 and 2. 10,100 for Dimitri. Enrique, Enrique, Enrico Suave. He's KLB. Not, he's ninety three hundred bucks. Uh, you like Dimitri here? Yeah, yeah, big time. Russian fighter coming in. First of all, he's eight. You always like Russian fighters. Oh yeah. Listen, there's a reason why the International Olympic Committee doesn't want these guys competing, <laughs> and I'm all over it, baby. That's why I want these guys competing, right? Uh, Smolly Yakov is eight and zero. He's finished all eight of those opponents. Uh, in the first round, most of them in the very first minute of the round. The one problem is is that he fights the absolute lowest level of competition. So it's very easy to go in there and smash these guys. However, you look at the flip side to his opponent, Luis Enrique, he fights also, for the most part, low-level guys, and he finishes them like six and a half minutes into the fight. This guy fights relatively the same level and finishes them in 25 seconds, right? So... When you're fighting guys that are terrible, you have to have that kind of performance. If you're dragging them out to the second round, it's like, eh, sure, impressive that you knocked the guy out, but not as impressive that you took a little while to do it. Now, Luis Enrique, right? Former Bra- he claims former Brazilian national team member in wrestling. I don't think so. I think he maybe wrestled with them a couple times, but I don't think he was a part of the team. But his game what is... What do you mean you don't know if he's part of the team? I think he's lying about it. I don't know anything he's lying Like when but... you Wikipedia, does it come up? Okay, I'll tell you why. Loss in translation, because he had to fill out his own accreditations, right? And he filled out his credentials as wrestled with the Brazilian team. But it doesn't say national team. What Brazilian team? The Olympic team? No. The, the world team? No. What team? But now think about it, right? We're Canadian. How many times do you see Team Canada and it's just a bunch of yokes from Thornhill or it's a bunch of guys? From, it's just like, how is that Team Canada? Canada should be everybody, not just a couple guys from Georgetown. Georgetown is a Team Canada, okay? Anyways, I don't think this guy was on Team Brazil, but I will give him something. 22 years old, he does know how to wrestle. When he goes out and he takes on these regular mid-level cans from Brazil, he takes them down. He pounds them. Small Yaka, former Greco-Roman wrestling champion out of Russia, is not going to get taken down. And second of all, he's actually been moved over from Russia to Poland, where he trains with Joanny and Jacek and Mohamed Kolodov and a host of killers out in Poland. So he's in a coaching role for those guys. He helps them with their wrestling. They, in turn, trade him striking skills. And when he goes into his fights, he wrestles a little bit. He mostly just plows them with his hands, man. So I think he's going to go out there. He's going to use the wrestling to keep the fight standing. He knocks Enrique out. Enrique is 0-1 in the UFC. He was completely knocked out, unconscious, out before his body ever hit the ground, out. And it was against... Francis and Ganu. So I'm going to have both of these guys, right? I'm in on that. And I think they both finish in spectacular fashion. One of the things that I like to do is look at who has the funniest name and maybe take them. I'm kind of joking. Not completely joking. Just a little bit joking. But 9100 bucks, we have Pepe. Pepe. Do I want Pepe? You have Pepe in a GPP. Because let me tell you, in his last two fights, he finished the last one by flying triangle. Ooh. That the sounds f- impressive. The fight before that, flying knee. <laughs> this guy loves to fly across the ring, man. He is very, very, very dynamic. He trains out of a gym called Evolucio Tai in Brazil. Their head trainer, Dida, comes from that shoot-to-box gym. And his whole theory is, if you're not the more skillful guy, you create chaos. You just swing from weird angles. You pressure the guy. You do things that they don't expect you to do and that they don't see in the gym. You do the David and Goliath method of it. Yeah, most people just throw knees. They don't fly through the air. And this guy's just very, very versatile. But he sounds reckless. Reckless. And that's what you want in a GPV, <laughs> right? Because he's three. He's won his last three fights, and he's finished all three of those guys. He's got two triangle chokes in that mix. One was a beautiful triangle armbar. One was a flying triangle. And then he has that flying knee in there as well. So if you want someone that's going to go out there and finish, then he's a guy that's going to go out there and finish. Problem is he's taking on Darren Elkins, who is fan favorite of mine. 
this guy is just a grinder. He is a D-plus level George St. Pierre, which means he can't really hold them down the whole length of time. They'll get back up, and he will get them back down. But he's got that style of just grind, 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 grind. I have so much respect for the guy. I think he wins this fight. However, when you're looking at a GPP... You want, you want a potential for a quick knockout. You want a potential for a quick knockout. I have seen Darren Elkins get knocked out and submitted, both in the UFC, in under a minute. He got submitted by Charles Oliveira. He got knocked out by, I believe, Chad Mendez. Both guys are tough guys, but there is a path to victory in finishing this guy. And the way he fights, which is grind forward, vi not very athletic. I mean, yes, he did wrestle at a decent level collegiately, but not the most athletic guy. He just plods forward. And when you're plodding forward against this Brazilian who's going to fly through the air like a mystical ninja and knock you in the head, then you're getting dicey. Cash game situation, a guy like Darren Elkins should be able to go and hold him down. But he's the kind of guy that if he wins, he scores 40, 50 points. That's his path to victory. If you want a GPP and you want someone that can finish, you go pay, pay. But above all else, $9,100. I mean, Big that's, that's the move on the GPP. So you can afford those other guys who are bangers. Uh, is there anyone else at like that $9,000 level or $8,000 level that we should be looking at? Yeah, so I thought a good a good solid move was uh, Jason Knight, $8,800. Now, as I was saying on Bookie Beatdown, I'm a gigantic Jim Aylers fan. I mean, Jim Aylers is my guy. But if there's anything with Jim Aylers is that he never moves his head and he gets hit and just... It takes the first shot. It's like, wow, that guy can take a punch. The second one, it's like, ooh, that hurt him. The third one, it's like he's slowing down big time, and he's just not necessarily the same guy he was. Now he's a stud on the ground, but Jason Knight is a stud on the ground, and I did feel like Jason Knight. Every time he fights a guy, their goal is, I'm gonna take this guy down. I'm gonna take this guy down. With Jim Aylers, I don't know that's necessarily his game plan because Jim thinks to himself, I got good hands, and this guy's pretty sloppy on the on standing. I'm gonna move them. I just got a bad gut feeling. Jason Knight hits him hurts him, capitalizes on a bad situation, and chokes him out. His last three opponents have been higher-level guys than Jim Aylers. He's 2-1-1 in his last three fights, so I, he's already accustomed to fighting a better level. This is almost like a step back, a never so slight step back, but finally he's getting a, win, a good winnable fight for him, and he's already 2-1 in his last three. So it's a good move for him. And with Jim Aylers, um, someone who, as two fights ago, got completely knocked out. His last fight, he was getting beat up before he poked the guy in the eye and got a no contest. So he could very well be on a two-fight losing streak. And for the value, $8,800, I have to take that play on Jason Knight. Run us through your cash team. Yeah, so with G Cash Damer, starting now, Francis Ngannou, I mean, clear as day, 11500 I think he's the guy you got to have. George Sullivan, $10,500, $1,000 cheaper. George Sullivan should be able to ground him. He's going to hurt him in the first round. He's going to tire him in the first round. He's going to ground him, take him out at the end of the second. It's going to be a good amount of points. I'm happy with it. Dmitry Smolyakov, the only thing that could go wrong is this guy running out of gas, but I think his opponent will be long in the hospital before he gets tired. So I like Smolyakov a lot, and you know, brick wall. Also, Luis Henrique is is his other loss in the UFC, or he's lost his one in the UFC. His other loss before that, three things in that fight. First of all, the guy knocked him completely out. <laughs> Second of all, the guy was rushing. And third of all, Sultan Aliyev, the guy that knocked him out, also fights in the UFC at 170 pounds. Uh, Dmitry Smolyakov, four fights ago, he weighed in at six foot three, two hundred and seventy-five pounds. So he's a friend, but a hundred pounds more than Sultan Aliyev, and Aliyev was able to take this guy out. So yes, I think Dmitry Smolyakov has got the goods. I think he puts him away. He is a massive mountain of a man. I think he gets the job done. Gilbert Melendez, nine thousand dollars. Gilbert Melendez highly, highly overlooked in the sense that he tested positive for steroids after his last fight. Oh, that sounds promising. You yeah. know, I like those guys. Exactly. So he, he's actually been off for a year, but I think it's going to do him some well in the case that he was fighting a lot, and you know the game was kind of passing him by. This gives him a chance to now rebuild himself, reanalyze things, and sit on the sideline. Prior to that last fight that he tested positive steroids, or tested positive for steroids in, he fought Eddie Alvarez to a split decision. A lot of people thought that Gilbert probably won that fight. Eddie Alvarez is currently the UFC lightweight champion. So he fights the best guys, and Barbosa is another one of the best guys, but Gilbert matches up really good with him. This is a case of it's a cash game team. Gilbert Melendez is a safer pick in the sense that if he does win, it's not going to be anything spectacular, but you know what you're getting out of him, and it's it's something solid. And Jason Knight with $8,800, at least with $100 left over overall, but I feel like they're fairly safe guys, especially if I can get three up-top finishes and those other two guys can get 50 points each. That's a 400-point team. And so. that's a win. <laughs> yeah, and a cash 300 team. points is a win. Yeah. So. Unless all the favorite guys win by a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so that just hasn't been happening. There. No, I know. Listen, it's a crazy game. The guys that you think are, are going <laughs> to earmarked get smoked and some random guy you never thought had a chance pulls it out so. well it was like last time like last week when we did our cash games and you gave nunez just like put her on your cash game she's at least probably going to go the distance boom yeah. she wins boom she wins it's great yeah yeah 
that's what you need, stuff like that. The one you're talking about, the one, the, the one big GPP that we were able to be a factor in. Um, it was the same thing. I remember there was a Sayar Baharizada taking on Brandon Thatch. Brandon Thatch is like a two-to-one favorite. And it was like, well, there's good value on Baharizada. And if he's going to win... He'll knock this guy in. Yeah, and he, he was knocks like, this guy. He was like two percent owned. It was great. Eighty seven hundred bucks. And everyone had the other side. Everybody and, and, had the other side. And really, creating that gap in a GPP is how you win. Oh, of course. Because there's so uh, unlike any other sport in terms of daily fantasy, where there are so few options and so few fighters and price ranges, you just get a lot of similar teams. Mm-hmm. And that's just a way to differentiate your team from the rest of the pack and turn the ownership percentage against them. You're going to lose doing it a lot of the times, but in GPPs, you're not looking to come in the you know 15th percentile, win your money back. You're trying to win. And if you win, like I said, you only need to win once a year, once every two years, if it's a big enough cash to more than win your money back. Well, I look at the classic example would be Holly Holm versus Ronda Rousey. Every time Ronda Rousey would fight, she was always the highest owned person because she's finishing in 20 seconds. She's killing these people. She's always the highest owned person. So you go in and it's like, well, I got to have her over Holly Holm because everyone else is going to have her. And I don't want to concede those points to everyone else. Which was, if, ha- which was happening, of too. Of course. In if every you were the Rousey guy fight. that took Holly Holm, if you were that guy that had Holly Holm, not only do you get that second round knockout, you... No, you get those points, and everybody else gets nothing. nothing. So it's right. It's a double threat. GPP team, what's different? Because it seems like you like a lot of the same guys at the top. I love Nganu. I really like George Sullivan. I love Dmitry Smolyakov. Jason Knight is, as I mentioned, I mean, I have to take that play on him. And then we have Godfredo Pepe, $9,100. He's one of those guys that on paper, yeah, a lot of people will say, oh, this is going to be a boring fight between him and Darren Elkins. You know, maybe a good good time to go grab a, a bathroom break or a beer, whatever the case being. But it's like, geez, with Pepe, you can't sleep on this guy for two seconds. And Darren Elkins is now training at a team called Team Alpha Male in Sacramento, California. Uh, he trains with a guy named Andre Touchy Feely. Andre Feely is a very tough guy. Andre Feely's last fight was against Godofredo Pepe. He was choked out in the first round by a flying triangle choke. So Godofredo Pepe can hang with these guys. He really can. And uh, for $9,100, this is a GPP. I got to take the chance. Cody Saftik, check him out on Twitter, at CJ Saftik. Of course, for a more comprehensive breakdown, especially in-depth of each fight, with like highlights going on at the same time Lots and the betting lines. Check out the bookie beatdown on the Fight Network with Paul Shaughnessy. How are you guys doing in that contest, by the way? I am currently sitting in 11th place. Okay. I am 10 points out of first, which is the 3,000 yep. US. Uh, I can, I can win. I'm going to win it. I know I said that the last time. I'm very cocky with it. When does I'm, it end? December. Okay, so it's January through December? I got five and a half months left. Um, but yeah, just like... The last event, I made up three and a half to four points on the guy in first place. Right? Oh, that's cool. I'm currently 10 points back. So I just, the way I see it, I need three or four good events in a row, which is not going to happen, but I'll get six good of events out of my la- next eight, and I will catch Wes Reynolds. He is a hell of a player. I will give him that, but I will catch and I will defeat him. Plus, I'm like three points out of the money range where you're getting paid for the top eight. Yeah. I'm like two or three points out. Oh, so you're golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel good about it, and so uh, it helps that I work here, and all I do all day is check out these fights. So You can follow me at the PME on Twitter, and check out the Fantasy Sports Network, the world's first and only 24-hour fantasy sports channel. We got a brand new ticker. Yeah, how about that? Brand new ticker. I saw that today. Yeah, you can check out all the work up online as well under the FNTSY Sports Network. I'm Pat Mayo, and I'll see you next time. For the latest expert fantasy sports strategy and tips on YouTube, click subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and call your local cable TV provider to order Fantasy Sports Network or watch us on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire and Xbox.